My top 10 rules for vibe coding. This is how I conjure fast, original, and error-free applications. With vibe coding being all the rage, I decided, let me take a look at this list, see if it actually makes sense. And it does. I loved it. But, are we selling the same cake with just different frosting? I say that because of this statement. Remember, vibe coding is the opposite of agentic engineering. Focus on discovering new things, not perfecting existing ones. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? So the first one is start with vibes, not specs. Don't over plan. Let intuition guide the first sketch. Follow the rabbit hole wherever it leads. If it feels right, it probably is. Absolutely, and it also applies to traditional software development. Don't be too rigid, especially when you don't know what you don't know. You're in that exploration phase. You can prototype. Kind of follow your intuition. See where things go. Be iterative. Understand feedback. Get a quick feedback loop. This isn't just applicable to vibe coding, this is applicable to just general software development when you don't know what you don't know yet. Before I get to the rest of the list, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real-time business critical data with historical context in fine-grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. Number two, research always and continuously. Before creating a line, map the terrain, deep research the docs, papers, and other materials, scan examples, identify constraints, use agents for fast summarization. Now this can sound like we're trying to rationalize number one, which is coding or vibe coding without a plan, but these really do go hand in hand of yes, you're exploring, you're being iterative, but you also wanna be using tooling like LLMs now to understand documentation, the problem space, the solution space that you're in. Sure, you don't know what you don't know, and that's what you're learning. It's both the tooling that you're using and using LLMs for something like summarizing documentation. It's about building that understanding and knowledge. Number three, define a boomerang loop. Structure your workflow to return build, test, fail, refactor, repeat. Recursive loops, not straight lines. Absolutely agree, but we don't need to rebrand this a boomerang loop. TDD, iterative development, continuous integration. That's all we're talking about here. Number four, test before fix. Write a test that fails first. It confirms a problem, sets a target, and strengthens the loop. This is just TDD in the context of bug fixing. Five, code and streams, think in layers. Work continuously, but structure your flow. Discovery, build, validate, refine, ship. This is just iterative development to me, but I think the vibey part of this is using the term streams, and I think really just about being fluid, kind of in the zone, and going through the motions of all those particular steps, not really context switching. Good advice. Six, refactor only after success. Get it working first, then step back and improve. Don't polish failure. This is basically don't waste your time making broken things pretty. Nothing specific to vibe coding, just in general software development. Another way of putting it, iterative development, is make it work, make it right, make it fast. Number seven, build small, layer later. Start minimal, one function, one file, add scaffolding only when the pain demands it. In other words, Yagni, you aren't gonna need it. And KISS, keep it simple, stupid. I'll have a link in the description for a video that I've done related to Yagni and what I call creating useless abstractions. Don't create code for something in the future for a problem that you might not even have ever and you don't really have right now. Eight, automate friction. Anything done twice gets scripted or delegated to agents. Preserve flow state. The vibey part of this is more the old school operations ops automate everything mentality, which I agree with, especially if it's very repetitive tasks, makes sense. The more traditional software development coding view of this could be dry, don't repeat yourself. I'll have a link in the description because I think dry in a lot of ways has caused more harm than good because of how it's been misinterpreted. So check out that video related to dry. Number nine, ship disposable deployments. Treat each push as temporary, deploy often, roll back easily, no attachment. In most modern systems, this is just the standard on how people operate. Be pushing small changes frequently. So if there is an issue, you know it's localized and hopefully you can kind of roll forward and push forward through it. Or if you need to, be able to roll back. And number 10, optimize for feel. Great code feels responsive, elegant, alive. Performance matters, but vibe is the real benchmark. It should make you feel a sense of accomplishment. Now this is for sure the most vibey on the list, and I do, but I do think it applies to even if you're manually writing code, it's just generally how you feel about it. I despise the term when people say clean code because they're really referring to just their preference. But there's something to that about how something's structured, how you feel about it, kind of, it's really just hard to measure. It's just generally how you feel about kind of the output, the result of what you're looking at, of what you've built. And this was by far my favorite comment, which is these guidelines look remarkably like guidelines that exist for dot, 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 regular software engineering.
And I agree, these were all really great points. I hate the term best practices. These should often be referred to as kind of like, these are probably a good idea given your context, your situation, but I really do think these are great points. What kills me in all this is specific to vibe coding because they're not. Now get in the comments because I want to know two things. The first is, what's your experience with vibe coding? How do you feel about it? And two is when you see posts like this, like this top 10, similar type of thing, do you think the same thing as I do, which is, why are we creating the same cake with different icing? Is this intentional? Are we just trying to advertise it or put it in a frame that's helpful for beginners that are getting into vibe coding? Or are we just rebranding things for the sake of engagement? I'm not really sure. Thanks again to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you want to support my channel, you can join it. The link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.